Hi, this is Dr. A with Clean Cam Review Video. We're going to look at tumor marker. We're going to look at specific cancers as part of our tumor marker series. All right, so let's start with breast cancer. Um, early detection of breast cancer will increase survival rates. Um, a biopsy is used to confirm. Early detection is used uh, done using mammograms. Um, only five to ten percent of breast cancers are linked to genetic mutations passed through families, and that's the BRCA1, BRCA2 genes. Um, though uh, far more common in women, breast cancer can occur in men also. Um, the tumor markers that are used to monitor treatment are CA15-3 and CA2729, and then therapy can be guided by the estrogen receptors and progesterone receptors in the her presence of HER2. Colon cancer is the most common gastrointestinal cancer. Individuals with a family history of colon cancer, especially if more than one relative has the disease, are at increased risk. There are genetic factors, environmental factors, and chronic inflammatory conditions that put a person more at risk for colon cancer. CEA is the tumor antigen that is used to monitor colon cancer. Um, CA199 levels are also used to monitor this disease. Uh, very high levels of CA99 can be seen in patients with a poor prognosis. Um, unlike most other assays, tumor markers should be diluted out until the result is obtained because um, CA99 is very susceptible to that hook effect of immunoassays. Um, because CA99 results can be seen at greater than 120,000 units per milliliter, which is really high. Hepatocellular carcinoma is the cancer of hepatocytes, which are liver cells, it is liver cancer. It often occurs concurrent with cirrhosis. Uh, annual cases, however, are decreasing, and um, AFP levels are the tumor markers that are used to monitor hepatocellular carcinoma. Lung cancer, um, there are several types. You have small cell carcinoma. Uh, it was once called oat cell carcinoma. Uh, neuron specific NLAs levels could correlate with disease stages. Uh, non small cell carcinoma is the most common type of lung cancer, and radiography is what is used to diagnose this. And large cell lung cancer is also diagnosed using radiography. So, for the most part, laboratory tests are not used frequently to diagnose and monitor lung cancers. Uh, they can be used to assess how the lungs are functioning, obviously, with ABG analysis. Melanoma is a malignant transformation of the melanocytes, which are the cells in your skin that give you your skin color. Uh, early diagnosis is critical. Um, the S100 marker is the histologic marker for melanoma. Multiple myeloma. Uh, increased levels of monoclonal paraproteins are evident in multiple myeloma. Routine lab tests diagnose and monitor the disease product progression. Uh, we use serum protein electrophoresis to diagnose the disease and also to monitor the treatment. Uh, the levels of the monoclonal gammopathy decreases with successful treatment. And so in this little image, you see in blue a normal serum electro, a protein electrophoresis and a multiple myeloma, you have this peak right here in this gamma region, which is the monoclonal gammopathy uh, that is present in multiple myeloma. Ovarian cancer is a group of lesions on the ovaries. It is the most deadly gynecologic cancer, and CA125 is a tumor marker that is used to monitor this disease treatment and recurrence, etc. Pancreatic cancer is difficult to diagnose, and there is usually a very poor prognosis. Um, most laboratory results are not helpful in diagnosis. Um, if elevated, CA99 and or CEA can be used to monitor, but it'd have to be present at diagnosis for it to be worth it. And then prostate cancer, um, you must differentiate prostate cancer from benign prostatic uh, hypertrophy or BPH. Um, for the PSA, the limit of normal has been in question. Again, uh, as seen in the previous videos, is 4 nanograms per mil. Uh, and you are really looking at velocity of increase in PSA is what is used to determine the need for biopsy. So if, um, usually if there's an elevated level on a man, then they just are going to draw it again um, a few months or a few weeks later. And uh, if there, if there's they stay just high, but they're not increasing, and they're just kind of staying at the same level, then it's probably going to be BPH. But if every time they're retested, it's higher and higher and higher, so uh, then 
who you're looking at prostate cancer. Uh, the free PSA, you will see a lower percentage of free PSA, uh, then, then there's a higher chance of cancer. So lower PSA, higher chance of cancer for prostate cancer. And then testicular cancer, um, these cancers grow from germ cells, um, the, which are the cells that produce sperm. Uh, you have non-seminomatous germ cell tumors, or um, you see elevated AFP or beta HCG in those. And seminomas, which are slow growing, you see elevated beta HCG. So again, seminomas are a slow growing form, whereas non-seminomas tend to grow more rapidly. Um, AFP levels can be as high as 1 million nanograms per mil in testicular cancer, another one you probably have to dilute heavily to get it to read, and all testicular cancers must be confirmed by biopsy. And that is your last one. Thank you.